Good day everyone, this is Ryan Lawaji from the Butcher Shop FX Studio. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to mold a butcher knife. So here are materials I'm going to use to start here. I got some Laguna white water-based clay, the EM210. I got my clay cutting board, which is just a couple paint sticks, hot glue to the board to my desired thickness of clay I want to cut. I got my wire cutter to cut the clay. I have a paint scraper here and a palette knife. I use this to smooth out my clay wall when I'm building it around the knife. I have my clay blocks all pre-cut to roughly the same size. And I have some hardware here I'm going to use for building keys in my mold. And then I have some Krylon Crystal Clear acrylic coating spray to create a barrier over my water-based clay. I've now taken my chunks of water-based clay and made myself a bed of clay where I can lay the butcher knife in the center. I trace around the butcher knife and carve out just enough clay so I can embed the knife to the halfway point. I'll then take my paint scraper or palette knife and go around and make that clay nice and smooth and get it nice and flush against the edge of that entire knife. And then I've also taken a wooden skewer and built a channel to so air will escape when I pour material into this mold. I've also taken a mountain of clay on the end of the knife handle and this is going to be my pour spout for pouring material into the mold. I've gone around and I've put hardware for keys and I've also made little divots as well for a different kind of key. I've also sprayed the Krylon Crystal Clear over top of the surface of the clay. The platinum silicone I'm using is Rebound 40 by Smooth On. It's a brushable silicone. You mix it one to one by weight or volume. It has a pot life of 20 minutes and a cure time of six hours. It's a very strong mold and highly durable if it's made properly. I would say we should build this mold in at least four layers thick, ending in an overall total thickness of at least three-eighths of an inch. The first two layers of silicone will be the detail layers. We'll just be adding the silicone by itself with no additives. And the second two last layers will be adding a thickening agent such as fume silica or in this case Thyvex to thicken it to a, a creamy peanut butter consistency so we can just butter it on and create a reinforcement coat. Also, please have an understanding of the health and safety with using these products. They should come with a material safety data sheet. Always read those over before working with any new product. Have an understanding how to work with the material. Stuff like fume silica requires wearing a dust mask or respirator or being in a well-ventilated area. So please just practice safety always when working with any kind of new materials. Some other materials here, I'm going to use a scale to weigh out my silicone, some disposable cups, I have some mixing sticks, and I have some disposable chip brushes. I use super glue to glue around the base of my bristles on my brush so I don't lose any brush hairs in the silicone. I'm also going to use some nitro gloves or vinyl. I want to stay away from anything latex based though. Latex will affect the way platinum silicone cures. So use nitro or vinyl gloves only when using a platinum grade silicone. So what I've done next is I've mixed the components A and B thoroughly together, scraped the sides of my container, scraped the bottom of my bowl, made sure everything was one solid color after mix, no marbling. I then brush a thin layer over the whole top surface of the knife and clay. I'll continue to move the silicone around, breaking up any air bubbles and fighting gravity until the silicone starts to thicken and then I will stop. We will call this the detail coat. I will be building this mold in four layers per side. So for the second layer, I'm going to do the exact same thing as I did for the first layer. Only difference is I'm going to add a little bit of red pigment. I'm going to call this detail layer number two. For the third layer, we're just going to mix A and B the same way we mixed it the first two times. But this time we're going to add a product called Thyvex. We're going to add about 2% to the mix ratio until it thickens up to a peanut butter consistency. And then we're going to trowel it on using a tongue depressor or a paint stick. Just like icing a cake. We will call this reinforcement layer number one. Icing the cake. Here I've taken some aluminum hardware and just filled it up with some more platinum grade silicone. Just so I can create some keys to interlock the silicone into the support shell. You can also use an ice cube tray to make keys. I'm also going to mix up some soap and water. More on the soapier side, I'm going to use this to, to smooth over the final surface of my thickened silicone to get a nice smooth consistency over the final 
surface coat. This will be my fourth and final layer of silicone. I'm going to mix the A and B components together and then once again add the Thyvex to thicken it to a peanut butter consistency. I've also added the red silicone pigment again. I'm going to butter it on like I'm icing a cake. Only this time I'm going to take my little rectangular keys and I'm going to just place them all over the top surface there. Once I press my keys into the top surface I'm going to build a little bit of silicone around the sides of the keys as well. After that, I'm going to take my soapy water, dip in my gloved hands or a tongue depressor and gently rub that soapy water over the surface of the silicone, getting it as smooth as I can. I will now wait six hours for the full cure time to expire. After six hours has elapsed, I'm now going to take some water-based clay, roughly an inch and a half to two inches thick and build a clay wall all the way around my silicone mold. We now should spray our water-based clay with some kind of lacquer. In this case, we're using Krylon Crystal Clear. We want to create a barrier to protect the plastic from the moisture that's in the clay. Plastic and moisture don't work so well together, so we want to keep any water or moisture away from the plastic paste too before we work with it. I'm now going to take some Sonet Wax Paste Wax Sealing Agent and rub it all over the entire surface of the silicone mold here and then give everything a spray with some Ease Release 200. You could also use Universal Mold Release as well. Now this is the product I'll be using for the support shell called Plasti Paste 2 by Smooth On. It's a mixed ratio of 1 part A to 2 part B by volume or 62 part A by 100 part B by weight. The pot life or working time is 10 minutes in room temperature. You can demold it and can be handled in 90 minutes depending on the mass but it needs a full 24 hour cure to get to its maximum strength. You can always accelerate these times by applying heat. When fully cured, the stuff is a strong, durable, lightweight plastic. Great for any silicone support shells. Use in a well ventilated area. Make sure you wear safety glasses, long sleeves, rubber gloves. I suggest using an organic vapor respirator and also read the MSDS sheets which are the material safety data sheets that come with all products before using anything new. Say it with me. MSDS, Material Safety Data Sheets. This is a must read before venturing into any new products. I'm also gonna use some acetone. I'm gonna have it standing by. So when I'm finished applying the product, I can use this to smooth over the surface using a tongue depressor. This way when it fully hardens, you won't have any sharp jagged edges. So practicing proper safety, I've mixed my components A and B and I've applied Plasti Paste 2 over the entire surface of the silicone, going around my keys and keeping them exposed. I did this using a paint stick and a tongue depressor. I'm trying to keep my first layer here about 3 8 of an inch thick or 1 centimeter. Once I feel like I've achieved my desired thickness, I'll then take some acetone and a tongue depressor and just smooth down the entire surface getting rid of anything that might set up to be a jagged hard edge. Once this stuff hardens to the point where it's no longer moving, I'm gonna repeat the process again and build a second layer. Only this time I'm gonna add some so strong black pigment. The color choice was whatever is closest to me at the time. The purpose of adding the color is just when I'm applying a second layer, I know I haven't missed any areas. The product recommends for maximum strength to do two layers and build an overall thickness of half an inch or 1.27 centimeters. Building, building the second, the second half. half. Once we've given our Plasti Paste 2 a sufficient amount of time to cure, 24 hours, I will then very gently flip the mold over, peel away all the water-based clay wall we built, I'll pull out the little nuts that we use for keys, but we want to make sure we don't dislodge our knife from that silicone. We want to make sure that knife is still embedded in the silicone. Same with our pour spout and same with our wooden skewer that we're going to use for a vent channel. I've also taken a surform tool and rasped around the whole entire outer edge of the Plasti Paste 2. Just, just grinding down anything that might have been jagged or sharp and just making sure the, the top surface is nice and flat. Now we're going to take a mold release. This is a Ease Release 200. It's to be used with silicones, urethanes, resins. I'm going to spray it over the surface of the silicone, then take a chip brush and brush it into the surface. And then give that a few minutes, and then I'm going to spray another coating. This is a very important step because silicone will bond to silicone. So we need that mold release in there to separate the silicone from itself. 
And now I'm ready just to repeat the same process as I did in the beginning. I'm going to do a first a detail coat, then add some red pigment, then I'm going to do a second detail coat. Take notice in the photos how I try to avoid the plastic paste too the best I can with the silicone. I just try to keep the silicone on itself. And if you get a little overspill, don't worry. Once it's cured, we'll just cut it and peel it away. So once again, for a third layer, we're going to add up some Thyvex to thicken it and then butter it on like rice in a cake. Don't forget those keys. It's also good practice to make your keys the same day you're making the mold. Don't use old ones. You, you just have a much stronger bond with the silicone when the keys are made fresh. So in this photo, it's the fourth and final thickened layer of silicone for this half of the mold. I've also embedded all the keys into the silicone. If you look around the outer shell, the plastic paste too, I've drilled holes. Those are going to be bolt holes for later to bolt the two halves of the mold together when casting. And I've also taken some throwaway clay and I've made little wedges all the way around. And these are going to be pry points. I've made them just big enough to fit a flathead screwdriver in to help pry the mold halves apart later. So once again, we're going to take the Sona wax and we're going to rub it all over the entire surface of the silicone. And we're going to make sure we rub it on the surface of the plastic base too. This is very important because when we build the second half of the support shell, the plastic paste too will bond to itself. So we need to have that sonnet wax there as a separator when we go to pry the two mold halves apart. And then I just repeat the process again with the plastic paste too. We do one layer first, and then I do a second layer where I add a little bit of black tint. Then once it's had a full 24 hours of cure, I will rasp away any rough edges with the surform tool, and then I'll flip the mold around and drill all the way through my previous bolt holes. And then I'll very carefully, with flat edge screwdrivers and some wooden wedges, pry, gently, gently pry this mold apart. So once the mold is open, we're going to clean out the knife, we're going to clean out the wooden skewer, we're going to clean out the clay, and it's ready for casting. Stay tuned for part two of this video where I cast a few of these prop knives. I just want to thank everyone for watching, and please make sure you check out some of our other videos. And if you like the content we're providing, please like and subscribe. The Butcher Shop Effects Studio.